So at this stage I think we'll go through and have a look at some of the reference. Now one thing I want to state about the reference material that I've included is that there aren't any movies and they're quite simply due to licensing and issues. Um, in the print version of the book the second edition there is a, already a, a tornado tutorial in there again I've had to basically pull the movies from there as well so again apologies for that it was a, simply a case of the uh, footage library company basically rescinding the uh, movie usage and the image usage in the electronic version of the second edition so therefore apologies for that so uh, what I'll do is I'll, I'll quickly discuss how to view some of the footage in a second but these images here uh, can be used in their come courtesy of uh, NOAA um, and the um, National Severe Storms Laboratory. Uh, so many thanks to those guys. Um, so what I want to do is have a quick scoot through and just discuss the formation of the uh, the tornado and how the debris is actually affected. So I'm just going to pull this guy across here. So this is the kind of thing that we've got established already. Now you'll notice obviously this is a lot more detailed but we still have this kind of um, perpendicular parallel effect going on that we've got in our material. Um, so at a later date if you want to you know, uh, add in some additional material effects to our system then feel free uh, after we finish the tutorial. A um, couple of things to note, we've obviously got this kind of nice out spray of particular debris that's basically being kicked up and swirled around and then flung out. So you can see the individual kind of debris components here. As, the, uh, as it's been picked up by the tornado and flung out. Now obviously um, as the tornado is obviously travelling across and swelling around it's obviously picking up the debris and it's not completely carrying it as it uh, travels. There is obviously going to be some boundary in essence when the mass of the debris outweighs the force of the, of the, uh, the rotation of the traction so therefore they are going to get flung outwards after a point. Now obviously this debris if it lands in front of the tornado is obviously going to be picked up again and then swung back around inside the tornado so that's obviously something that we need to introduce into our system so it's not just going to be flung out, hit the deck and then sit there even when the tornado passes over it it obviously needs to be picked back up and flung around again. Okay so there's a couple of things we need to introduce here one is basically obviously the churning up and secondly we need to create this kind of rotational attraction and particular debris as it's kind of swelling around up here and also this basically like three layers of debris so we've got this kind of larger external particular matter here and we've also got this kind of finer internal matter that's traveling further up you can start seeing it around here and kind of around about this point so I'll just scoot through we should be able to see some more of these guys. Here we go. So we've got this kind of finer, so we've got heavier matter down here, and we've got this finer stuff out here. So in essence, we've got like about two or three systems all built into the same one that need to be affected to create a nice effect. I'll just scoot back to some of these earlier ones. Here we go. So we can start seeing this kind of like nice cloud mass. So we've got this nice kind of detailed internal stuff and this kind of wider, uh, heavier debris on the exterior as it's kind of swelling around. All right. Um, talking about the actual destruction process, this guy here. Now this is the result of a tornado actually passing through a building. Now you'll notice a couple of things. Number one is that we've got a, a definitive path as the tornado has basically passed through. You can even notice the beds are still standing on here. So even though it's gone straight through the building. We still notice that it is very kind of localized. So you know we can have these smaller tornadoes like our one that we've got on our scene here pass through a building and still have some elements still standing at the end. So therefore, we don't need the entire building to to literally be destroyed. Hence, having some of the posts and the foundations still standing. Hence, these guys here. A um, couple of other things. One is the fact that obviously the windows have been blown out and the roof's been ripped off, and we've got like an out force here. So obviously the tornado has gone through here, but we've still got some destruction over this side as well. Now the reason behind that is because uh, the majority of tornadic destruction um, is basically due to changes in pressure. So therefore, if you notice that a lot of the debris is obviously exterior and has been blown outwards. Now that is basically due to air pressure so the air pressure in, inside the house is obviously different to the air pressure within the tornado so therefore the um, the breakup of the building is going to be an outwards 
explosive one. It's like as if someone planted a bomb inside the uh, inside the building, so it blew outward. So it's literally that kind of explosive force that we need to simulate. So in our scene, when we actually come to simulate it, we need to basically have the um, the debris forced outwards and then get caught up by the tornado as opposed to just being peeled away into the tornado so it needs to be flung outwards so this guy needs to come out here the roof tiles need to uh, be ejected outwards like this then it gets caught up by the twister okay so it's that kind of motion that we need to try and uh, simulate and establish within our own system one last thing I want to quickly discuss is obviously this debris now we've obviously got a fair amount of horizontal debris obviously you know scattered across the ground but it's obviously a fair amount which is implanted in the ground itself so we've got kind of a fair amount of uh, ones which have you know hit down as, at so much force so therefore they are basically impaled within the ground so therefore um, when it actually comes to simulate in our system we can basically if they hit the deck at such a force they can literally just stick, stick straight into the uh, into the ground so we've got a fair amount of debris which is not only horizontal but also impacted in the ground now one thing to bear in mind with this system that we're going to be setting up now this entire thing is going to be particle flow based we are not dealing with reactor dynamics in this particular instance because this barn destruction process is going to be baked what you can do after a certain point in time pipe the entire thing into a reactor system and get reactor to simulate um, geometry against geometry interaction such as uh, the pieces colliding off one another and also on the ground so bear that in mind when we actually come to build our system up it is only to do with particle flow okay not to do with reactors so you will get one or two pieces of geometry intersecting with the ground now to hide that as the uh, debris hits the deck we're going to place particles over these pieces as well so therefore when they hit the deck they can test for interaction so we have some debris kicking up as soon as like one of these kind of like you know slats or roof tiles hits the ground so when it hits the ground a piece of dust kind of you know a few chunks of dust kind of um, fly up which will occlude any kind of geometry intersection within this ground plane all right so it's kind of a bit of a fake but it it, it does work at the end of the day um, just mentioning the footage I would seriously suggest that you have a look at footage before attempting this tutorial like I say unfortunately I've not been able to include any with this particular one so again apologies for that however I would seriously suggest you jump across onto YouTube uh, some of the uh, stock image uh, libraries have a look at some of those purchase them if, if you physically can and or one really good resource is this National Geographic one go to ngdigitalmotion.com you can basically look at some samples and also purchase some clips if you need to a uh, really really good resource for any kind of uh, natural effects 